दिस इज द लॉन्च ऑफ माई न्यू यूट्यूब चैनल एक्स बैंकर एज अ रिटायर्ड बैंक ऑफिसर इट विल मेनली फोकस ऑन बैंकिंग इकोनॉमिक्स एंड सोशल इशूज ऑफ कोर्स ऑल ऑफ दिस इन ले मैंस टर्म्स इट विल ऑल्सो हैव द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ कॉमन पीपल एज वेल एज सम पीपल हु आर डायरेक्टली इन्वॉल्व इन दिस फील्ड इन द एरिया ऑफ बैंकिंग एक्सेट्रा आई एम एक्सट्रीमली फॉर्चुनेट टू हैव विथ मी ऑन दिस फर्स्ट डे श्री दीपक कुमार बासु not only a dwain in bank officers movement particularly in the 80s and 90s he was a behemoth of a figure is an absolute behemoth in the bank officers movements across india pan india covering all the banks while he was while he was principally from state bank of india his contribution was more to that but he was well known and well recognized across banking circles all over india even today at the ripe old age of over 75 he is still actively involved and travels across the country and across west bengal to ensure that state bank pensioners all over india get their dues and get better and better benefit and the benefits are improved each year for that he leaves no stone unturned so with these small words i'll start my small tete a tete with sri vasu the usual request to like share and subscribe of course goes along now i'll come the welcome we are extremely proud of your elevation as the all india general secretary of the federation of pension association please talk about your trade union activities in the bank and aibc and your trip <coughs> and your tip to the younger trade union functionaries in public sector banks you see that myself was promoted in the year 1974 joined this officers movement of state bank of india in 1977 i was in the executive committee the then of sbi supervising staff at social bengal circle then the federation also i had the privilege to work with the rn godwale umesh singh the dwain in the movement particularly the officers movement in banking industry especially in state bank of india i have joined this uh, movement slowly slowly it took up then the ai kubu then finally 6th october 1985 the ai boc all india bank officers confederation was formed at delhi since then the all officers organizations of different nationalized banks they were coordinated under leadership of arun godbole and sachin gupta and i had the privilege to work with them very closely state level national level i have seen that uh, officers those who were toiling even if they were not eligible for casual leave their service condition their pay fixation entire thing to cap and the officers used to get their rational reasonable the compensation from the bank so far i am concerned you know i think myself is a very active worker in the movement not think myself as a leader but as of today the position is such that i have become a leader and 31st july or in my own circle my appeal to the youngers those who are in the movement that be committed there will be operation from bank there will be operation from your own colleagues in the organization there will be uncomfortable situation in the working situation also but 
my experience says that if you are committed to the cause you are not averse to the the support of the colleagues i think there will be no problem definitely the movement will take up and coming days are very bright for that purpose i'll move on to my next question yes how does your previous trade union experience help you in steering the pension association do sbi oa and sbi sa officer association and staff association do they extend due cooperation in your activities what are the new change challenges of enhanced responsibilities as federation general secretary true you know that uh, that uh, support will come provided you are eligible and deserve for it you yourself have to move out the movement and uh, they will the people will come out come out and as of today the staff association and officers association they are not in bad shape as we have seen in earlier days so for the ir policies of bank and government of india is concerned they have to have our support for their cause also that is the one of the reason why they are very closer to us but for the reasons and the sufferings and of this the pensioners community you know the coordination amongst the both serving federation is absolute cry unfortunate but it is true earlier than this july 2022 there was no move from our federation to call the both serving federation in our agm also this time both of them they came we are on the job and uh, hopefully that a coordination committee amongst the serving organization that is federations and ourselves can develop our appeal to both of them i have already met both the general secretaries of officers federation and staff federation i have said that look as far service regulation and also pension regulation it's a matter of negotiation with the serving employees it cannot be as of today those who have demanded from government and all we that as of today it is being negotiated with them we have made a point that look you will be negotiating but our appeal is before going for negotiation you must know our mind they have agreed both of them now the regular shape and strategy is to be formed i am very hopeful i am hopeful that during my tenure it can get a shape i am confident i am confident in state bank particularly it can get shape in other banks we have already formed one it is in calcutta and sbi pension association bengal circle we took initiative of calling on stakeholders of pensioners community of entire banking industry but uh, there are some hiccup that uh, that is to be taken care of and responsibility is with us mainly because we are the bigger our number is the greatest we are most organized so i am very hopeful that coming days for the pensioners community of banking industry particularly state bank of india will be definitely brighter 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 divide okay thank you so much with your permission i now move on to my next question that is it's a very very important question because often times people seem to ask why do we at all have a pension association so from that point of view i would like to know from you what have been some of the most notable improvements in pensioners benefit including health insurance in the last few years you know very much very much did uh, the chairman the onunduti bhattacharya we met i wanted to meet with her and ultimately we could meet at kharagpur personally and uh, we requested that industry level insurance has come taking that clue whether a good insurance policy for the pensioners of state bank of india could be taken out 
and uh, she was in the agreement ultimately it was done and this is the uh, fourth year that is started from 19 uh, uh, it is started from 19 20, 20 uh, no 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 20 uh, it was uh, 16 2016 15th january 2016 the rmbs originally that one is converted to policy and uh, subsequent uh, many development look it was fund were locked in the corporate center now it has given given to the insurance straight away another one that you can have a policy a and b previously you cannot enjoy both together now we can enjoy it both together and this uh, uh, the system has become to stay that uh, pensioners initially they have inhibitions but uh, this health care is one of the greatest hazard to be taken care of and a bank is also extending all support all out support for towards this and uh, hopeful that uh, it will uh, develop day by day, day by day. Corporate center also taking us into confidence. And uh, negotiation with the corporate center at the LHO level and journal office level, though it is not there in any bank, but in State Bank of India, ritually, we are being negotiated and with the CNR, IRFs, DMD, HR, and, and they remain present here, the CGM, now naturally, its issues are being discussed and negotiated. It is being in resolved. spite of all your efforts, in spite of all these, many of our retired colleagues have still not become members of the pensioners association, which otherwise could have become even stronger because we would have more fund to help more activities and more support to members True. possibly with that. What is your message to them? You know. Uh, it is the same in your case. Uh, in our circle also hardly 50-55% uh, pensioners are member. Yesterday I have finalized uh, a database to be developed where the pension paying branch wise, PF index wise, date of birth wise, address wise and all these things, this uh, mobile number wise, we can get data. You can, um, if we can get a detailed data of a pension paying branch, where we can, jolly well can segregate who are our member, who is not our member. Once the database is perfect, I think we can approach uh, many one of them. Senior pensioners and family pensioners, uh, they have their inhibitions, but it is also true. Approach from the organization is not forthcoming. People at the lower level, they are not approaching the members on retirement or already retired colleagues. But uh, trend has developed. The people are now coming themselves to the association office to become a member. Previously, it was not there. Slowly, slowly, it is being taken care of. The problem is with the seniors, those who are not members. We are trying to build up a database where we can segregate who is our member, who is not our member. One incentive is there, you know, those who are member, we are felicitating them. We are also extending a small financial support in case of demise, which is not there for the those who are not member. So it is made known, I think slowly, slowly people are coming and watching. But unfortunate part, they are all over the circle. All over the circle, I am not blaming or undermining any leadership. Still, many a mile to go, many a mile to go. I will give you an example. Family pension was revised from 1st April 2021. First lot payment was released by the corporate sector. For Bengal circle, it was 8,000 odd. In Lucknow circle, it is number one. It can give an idea how our organization is active there. So we are trying to motivate people and uh, be more active and uh, pro for the pension. Now all over the country uh, the people are taking care of. Young, young leaders are coming 
those who are there in the movement, either in the staff or in the officers, uh, they are coming and we are approaching that you kindly take care of the seniors. And so I think it will take time, but still it is a long a mile to go. A long a mile to go. Now my question, a question which is very close to the hearts of many senior retired officials of SBI. It is that in spite of the best efforts of the Pensioners Association and individual pensioners from across the country, Government of India has so far stalled the legitimate demand of 50% pension for all and the matter is pending in the judicial labyrinth for decades. Do you see any change in stance in government and judiciary in the near future? Please also explain in simple terms the present status of one rank, one paid in banks, pension and family updation in SBI. First of all, I must uh, deal with this uh, court case. State Bank of India, we are having pension since long. But the unfortunate part, only State Bank is having three benefits. This has become an eye short to the, not only to the DFS representatives, officials, but also initially a few uh, organizational leadership, AIBA particularly. Here, despite repeated recommendation by bank's chairman, number of time, DFS has objected to any change in the pension payment to the seniors in the name of three benefits. 40-50 it has come unfortunately as a part of bipartite agreement. Bipartite agreement, whatever is the reason, though I was in service then, that it was decided the pension will be paid initially for six bipartite, then seven bipartite, like that, less than the people those are in service. Subsequently, it was taken care of from 1st May 2005. But the other than State Bank of India, it was revised. Then we had to go to the court, Supreme Court initially 2011. Our petition was vetted by our Harish Shalve, Benu Gopal. We are confident that both of them, they opined that your case will win. Ultimately shifted to Delhi High Court. Though government wanted that case should be quashed. After adjournment of our case more than hundred times. We are toiling from post to pillar. Again, Orunduti Bhattacharya uh, supported that look. If we can create a pressure on court headed by Gita Mittal, division bench, possibly something can come. Immediately we collected the people, those who have died, from different circle with PF index. It came, we come to know that on an average 5,000 pensioners died. When he placed before the court, yes, the look, this is the people, beneficiaries are going away, leaving this earthly world. The madam, Gita Mittal, was furious. And uh, she said that within seven days you decide, otherwise we are going to decide. Within seven days, a committee was formed, Murmu Committee, where our chairman, Diden Urduti Bhattacharya, did not be present, but she presented our case. I am told that Murmu wanted to know from Madam, now who has done this? Madam said, how can I say you people have done this? But it was done. But ultimately, the ceiling which was there, not removed, it was removed, 2,402 up to that. And seven bipartite retiree people, they got this. Some tidbit is there, FPAPQP is there. Hopefully that 20th of December, the direction is, it will appear in the roster as for final hearing. Continuously. We are hopeful that uh, the case will be concluded. 
And once it is concluded, 50% is to be given. No other alternative because of this uh, Supreme Court direction otherwise. So we are hopeful, hopeful, very much hopeful that uh, yes, the people will get, but the effective date uh, may be changed by the, as per desire of the government. Something somewhere we have to manage, but we'll get it. I, I'm confident we'll get it. OROP, you know, even if the defense people, they are yet to get it. Our pension regulation is the greatest problem for us. There is no provision for updation. We're trying to include into the negotiation by part And I talk with Bangladesh, the OP convener. The corpus is a greatest problem for pension updation. Where from money will come? State bank, though people are of the opinion that we have sufficient fund, but I have my own doubt. As because there is no representative when any federation in the trustee board, window dressing in the name of window dressing, less provision is being done. My, my, my apprehension, I am happy if I am wrong. Other banks, they are not making any provision whatsoever. So, I think uh, uh, the only way could be, along with the salary division, a person, say 15%, 10% will go for the salary division, 5% will go to the pension. My next two questions will be keeping in view that banking trade union is absolutely in your blood. You could, cannot be without it. At the same time, you are a very responsible citizen who, are, who is fully aware of the economic real, realities of the country. Keeping a balance between these two, I'd like to have your view. The first is on the proposed privatization of certain banks. In fact, in the longer run, the medium term run, the present government in principle wishes to keep state bank and around two or three other large banks right. in the government kitty and uh, privatized rest of right. it. And my second question would be, uh, a little unrelated, not exactly with the banks. Uh, it's As of now, it's more with the government sector. Of course, it also covers uh, PSUs. That is the raging debate with the defined pension scheme, which is also called as the old pension scheme, vis-a-vis -vis the new pension scheme. Right. Please, if you want to take, you can take both the questions together and respond. Okay. Uh, look at that, that uh, privatization is a greatest bogey, I must say, against the banking industry. We have seen that uh, economic development of the country, green revolution, white revolution, industrial revolution, whatever it may be, direct support from public sector banks. It was there. Now, of late, since 1999, the, it is being uh, changed and now public sector banks are now being taken care of by the private sector in this thing. I have my own apprehension that uh, private sector banks, if they at all have any social objective, it will be very minimum vis-a-vis -vis the public sector as of today. A percentage of the net profit goes to the public sector, goes to the weaker section, goes to the DRI. But a private sector, I'm, I'm afraid the way that it will be available then or it will go to the monopolistic, that uh, private ownership. And, uh, look at this uh, pension, new pension and old pension. Old pension say the defined pension, whatever I will get, I can calculate. I can get it till I am alive. New pension scheme, you can get back the 60% of your deposit. As your PF is not there, you can get there and 40% invested elsewhere and there. And you can have an opportunity to change your investor within four or five years stick and this thing. But you know, though yes, there is a demand to switch over to again come back to the old pension scheme. Uh, I have my own reservation because 
already money invested for the long term in government and other securities by the different agencies. If we go back, who is going to get back this money? And uh, complications are there. So even if uh, uh, wish is there, pious wish, I must say, but it is a very, very difficult proposition as of now to get back to the old pension scheme. Old pension scheme, definitely, after a certain period, the people will be minimized, go, and the corpus will be eliminated. But the, the provision is to be made as per act of respective banks. But the, uh, the provision made by the new pension scheme, an investment made by the different agencies, even if it is a decision is taken, it's a very difficult proposition to get back to the original one. And I have my own reservation, very difficult, very difficult to get back to the original. So we have come to the end of my planned set of questions. Now, if you want to say anything in excess of this, which is not here, it's left uncovered, it's... No, no, one thing, you know, uh, Sishan Gupta, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that uh, I've never, never thought of that, that uh, this sort of uh, that, uh, questions and it will come up. It, it, it minds me that uh, uh, it happens that uh, pensioners, particularly family pensioners, they are not aware which they are eligible, which they are not eligible. Unfortunate part, despite our best, we have enrolled them as an associate member. All said and done, very few of them, they are attending meeting. They are not uh, aware, aware from it. Go. But of late, very few, in case of distress, they used to call us. I think the two parties there, one, the benefits and the which we are getting from bank, and how to get it. Look at our bank. Only in State Bank of India we have dispensary. We have investigations. Repeated requests I have made, but very few seniors used to do that periodical checkup of their blood and all these things. This is absolute necessary. When it is available, why should I not? But people, they don't feel they are uh, not interested i do not know that finally when they are in a deep trouble then it creates a problem my appeal to all concerned that uh, we have to create a sensible awareness amongst the all amongst the all at all level so that that in west bengal we are having 63 units corporate center they want now we have 63 WhatsApp group. Corporate center, why it is not there in all, all over the country? It is not that, that they can have it, uh, my wish. But uh, we are trying that uh, sensitization, reaching people, and uh, so that uh, people can be uh, reached and approached. And they can also feel like contacting their organization. This is the uh, trend. My dream is that as a man of organization, we, the pensioners, at this age, we should not feel dejected. We feel we are in a family. Family, thy name the, is pensioners. Whenever I am in need, I will get all support from the pensioners. So, uh, once it can take up, we can survive as a, as a very, very effective a citizen of the country and also as a pensioner of state bank. Thank you. Thank Red you very full much. Thanks to you, Dipakda. To all the viewers, once again, I request to support with your views, comments and of course, subscription. On my part, my commitment is that there will be a continuous effort to improve both in terms of technology and content. Thank you all.